He was a man of few words, but when he spoke, he meant what he said. You need me as much as I need you, Crow. Give that some thought. In a career spanning half a century, John Wayne made more movies than any other Hollywood star and captured the imagination of moviegoers as no one else has ever done. I take particular delight in seeing you hang. Like a monument carved in granite, he stood as a symbol of American virtue, strength, and courage. But throughout a life of passion, determination, and triumph, his greatest role was always that of John Wayne, American. What did you say your name was? John Henry Thomas. Don't I know you from somewhere? To my knowledge, Colonel, we've never met before. In 1969, John Wayne co-starred with Rock Hudson in The Undefeated, a story of the turbulent aftermath of the Civil War. Wayne and Hudson play Union and Confederate colonels whose paths cross in Mexico shortly after the end of the war. Colonel, why don't you take all these people and go on home? There's no telling what you're gonna run into farther south. We are going home. It's ahead of us. You went out there to talk. Why did you have to shoot the man? Conversation kind of dried up, ma'am. The two become pawns in Mexico's violent political struggle and ultimately join forces in order to fight their way back to their own country. To staff the rest of the crew, Wayne surrounded himself with several familiar faces, which adds to the fun of watching The Undefeated. Wayne's exercising increasing control over his films by then. I think you could look at the cast and, and the uh, supporting cast. I mean, he's got Harry Carey Jr., whom he'd worked with many times, Ben Johnson, who was a part of the old John Ford Stock Company. He's got Paul Fix, whom he had known forever. You come in mighty handy a few times. Take care of yourself. We may need you again, John Henry. You'll have a hard job finding me, Joe. Also cast were two stars of the Los Angeles Rams football team, quarterback Roman Gabriel, and defensive tackle Merlin Olson. Well, I believe Bill Clothier's the cameraman, and he'd worked with Clothier time and again. And Andrew McLaughlin is the director, and uh, Andy had been Ford's assistant director on The Quiet Man, and of course is Victor McLaughlin's son. The elaborate production schedule called for 69 shooting days, with all but three scenes to be shot outside on location. Filming was to begin in Durango, Mexico, where Duke's own company, Batjack, had a studio complex. While Andy was a, a competent director, uh, Wayne is calling a lot of the shots on the production. This is becoming more and more a John Wayne production. Where to, John Henry? West. The first day of shooting marked the first meeting of the two megastars, Wayne and Hudson. Many feared a clash of styles between Hudson's debonair manner and the Duke's no-nonsense grittiness. But the two hard-working actors hit it off surprisingly well. Oh, thanks, John Henry! Well, now, I wouldn't call that exactly fair, would you? No, I wouldn't! <laughs> Wayne offered Hudson ideas on how he should walk, move, and shoot a gun. Rock Hudson, he came across as a very dedicated professional who learned his trade the hard way meaning by doing it in action films, making all the mistakes in the world, but had learned a great deal. And Wayne respected that because he had done the same thing. He had learned it the hard way. Rock showed he could easily handle the serious action scenes and horsemanship skills right along with Wayne. It's like old times, huh, Colonel? Even off the set, Hudson proved to be a match for the Duke. I know my dad loved playing bridge and chess. So if he could find a, a bridge camera, there he would be, um, you know, an undying friend of that person. Director Andrew McLaughlin began filming on Friday, February 7th. But when cameras were finally ready to roll, Wayne slipped and fell while walking across a tile floor. The Duke sustained two fractured ribs and was unable to work for 10 days. McLaughlin had to shoot around Wayne, concentrating instead on scenes with co-star Rock Hudson. 
General Robert E. Lee surrendered. Am I right? Yes, sir. That means that officially we no longer exist as an armed body. Yet everywhere I look here today, I see armed men wearing uniforms and flying the battle flag. Let's take them to Mexico. The film climaxes in a spectacular scene in which Wayne rounds up a stampede of 3,000 wild horses to cross the Rio Grande. It was the largest herd of horses ever used in a motion picture. The detailed Civil War scene was filmed 40 miles outside Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at what was once a sugar plantation called the Shades, just one mile from an actual Civil War battlefield. The complex scene took 26 men a full week to plan. It was a brilliantly choreographed feat employing 300 cavalry, artillery, and riflemen. Planning was so precise that the sequence went off without a hitch on the first take. For the dramatic scene in which the Confederate Hudson burns down his own house, an authentic plantation manor was used. A replica of the mansion's interior was built at a warehouse in Baton Rouge. In the scene where Rock Hudson puts a torch to the house's interior, faulty fireproofing material was used. The fire blazed out of control. Luckily, the building's sprinkler system kicked in and no one on the set was injured, just soaked. Cast and crew were in the home stretch when their bad luck returned. On the next to the last day of shooting, Wayne suffered yet another accident. During a cavalry charge scene, Wayne's saddle girth slipped, twisting him around the horse and throwing him to the ground. The actor dislocated his right shoulder and tore ligaments in his arm. At a nearby hospital, the Duke was x-rayed, given a shot of Novocaine, bound up, and sent back out into the saddle. Even though he had lost complete use of his right arm, Wayne just kept it tucked against his torso as much as possible to reduce the pain. There are very few people that could look as well riding a horse as my dad's. It's hard to find a double for him. I mean, that, and that would drive him crazy. If somebody, you know, was doing a long riding sequence and they wanted to use somebody else to do it, if they didn't do it well, he would go out and do it because he didn't want to look that way. Principal photography on The Undefeated was miraculously completed three days under schedule at the end of March 1969 and was released in November of that year. As usual, John Wayne worked hard to promote the film. Well, by 69, Wayne is becoming more accepted as an actor of stature. It's almost as if the critics had just discovered him. Well, he's been around forever. But they're beginning to take him more seriously. Throughout his successful career, he got bad reviews from critics. He said, I'm doing something that people want to see, so he didn't have too much cotton for the critics. When they, when they criticized him in a negative way, or when they, when they extolled him in a positive way. He knew who he was, he knew who he could deliver on the screen, and he was very confident in that. But it wasn't until 1970 that he would receive recognition from his peers with an Academy Award for his performance in True Grit. At long last, he had the recognition of his industry, and that was very important to Duke. I mean, Duke was loyal. He's loyal to his friends, he's loyal to his country, he's loyal to his industry. And he wanted real respect. And at last he had it. Although the undefeated lost money initially, over time it has made a bigger profit than anyone could have imagined. Proving that John Wayne films are evergreen. They play on for generations to come, their magic ceasing to fade with age.